Welcome to Science Era. In this video, we're going to focus on cell physiology and fluid homeostasis. Let's begin. In this video, we're going to look at some of the questions, um, exam type questions related to membrane protein, body fluid compartments, measurement of fluid compartment, forces across capillary wall, fluid balance, cellular transport, and signal transduction pathways. So the first question is, the cell membrane is made of lipid bilayer with many different proteins that regulate cell function and activity. Name the type of protein represented by numbers 1 to 4 on the diagram. So the proteins are number 1, ion channels, number 2, surface antigen protein, number 3, receptors, and number 4 is the addition molecules. The amount and type of membrane protein depend on the cell and on regulatory factors that are subject to change such as immune status and hormonal level. Next question is related to body fluid compartments. Name the fluid compartments based on the relative volumes. How much fluid will be associated with each compartment in a 60 kg person? So the number one represents total body water. Number two, intercellular fluid or ICF. Ext. Number three is extracellular fluid. Number four is interstitial fluids. And number five is plasma volume. Total body water is about 60% of the body's weight. So in 60 kg person, as asked in number question number six, how much fluid will be associated with each compartment? the total body water will be 36 liter. Two third of the total body water makes up extra intercellular fluid. So it will be 24 liters. ECF make up one third of the total body water. So it will be 12 liter. ICF interstitial fluid make up three quarter of the ECF extracellular fluid which will be 9 liters and the plasma volume makeup quarter of the ECF uh, volume extracellular uh, fluid volume so it will be 3 liters. Measurement of fluid compartments. Name the indicator that are used to measure plasma volume, extra fluid volume and the total body water. Then give the formula used to calculate fluid compartment size by the indicator dilution method. So number one is Evans blue dye is used to measure the plasma volume. Inulin is used to measure extracellular volume. Antipyrene or titrated water is used to measure total, total body fluid. And number four compartment volume can be calculated by the formula volume equal amount of indicator injected over the final concentrate uh, concentration of indicator in milligrams per liter starling forces across capillary wall write the starling equation of the pressure governing fluid movement into and out of the capillary shown below Describe the effect on net filtration pressure of an increase in capillary hydrostatic pressure to 40 mmHg or a reduction in capillary oncotic pressure to 20 mmHg. So the net uh, filtration uh, pressure is equal to forcing fluid out minus the drawing fluid in. Number two, increase in the hydrostatic pressure forces more fluid out of the capillaries. This can result in edema. Pooling of fluid in interstitium reducing pi increases the net filtration pressure and increased fluid flux into the interstitium. Fluid balance. Fluid balance is necessary for regulation of vascular volume, referring to the diagram. Describe the effect of a decrease in fluid intake on a urine 
uh, from 2.5 to 1.5 liter on urine output and thirst and then describe the effect of increase in fluid intake on urine output and thirst so number one a reduction in fluid intake result in dehydration and imbalance that tips the balance to right fluid deficit urine volume is greatly reduced and thirst is stimulated effect of an increase in fluid intake and increase in fluid intake without equal losses tips the balance to the left resulting in significantly increased urine output to compensate thirst is not stimulated cellular transport one active transport name the two cellular transport processes depicted give two example of this type of transport so primary active transport major example includes sodium potassium pump atps hydrogen atps uh, hydrogen potassium atps and calcium atps what transport is affected by a substance orbin orbin is an irreversible blocker of sodium potassium atps Orbin, also called digitalis, is a glycoside that is used to correct cardiac uh, arrhythmiasis and increase cardiac contractility. Define primary and secondary active transport. Primary or uh, uh, first degree active transport is when the transport of iron across a membrane requires a direct expenditure of energy in form of ATP. Secondary or second degree active transport does not directly use energy but instead take advantage of ex uh, electrochemical gradient established by first degree active transport. Gated channel. A gated channel is depicted. Name two type of gated channel and stimuli for gate opening. So number one is ligand gated channel opens when a specific ligand such as acetylcholine binds to its receptor. Number two is voltage gated channel open in response to a channel uh, change in membrane voltage. These channels are ion specific. The ion move down their concentration or electrochemical gradient. Solute movement. Multiple transporters and channels used to transport system to create a gradient for solute movement. Identify which of the panel depict a passive channel, secondary channel, and uh, secondary active sub, uh, symporter and secondary active antiporter. So number one is second degree active symporter. Number two represents second degree active antiporter, and number three represent passive channel in the cell depicted the first degree active sodium potassium atps also called sodium pump maintain low intracellular sodium concentration creating an out to in gradient for sodium this allows the second degree active transport of other molecules x and y in figure through many different transporters next is vascular transport Transport of the substance through the membrane can occur by the formation or movement of lipid membrane vesicles. Name the type of vascular transport represented in each channel. So, in number one, represent exocytosis, number two, represent endocytosis, and number three, represent transcytosis. Exocytosis involves fusion of the vesicle to the cell membrane for extrusion of vesicle content endocytosis involve engulfing substance or particles from the extracellular fluid by membrane forming a vesicle within the cell transcytosis occur in capillary and intestinal epithelial cell and using endocytosis and exocytosis move the material across the cell membrane vascular membrane transport require energy in form of atp this form of transport is especially important when the material to be transported need to be isolated from intercellular environment because of the toxicity or has the potential to alter the signal transaction system then we have water channel 
Water flux flows osmotic pressure gradient as shown in the diagram. Name the membrane channel through which water movement occur and the function of water channel. So, membrane channel through which uh, water movement occur is aquaporin AQPs. AQPs are present in all membranes selectively allowing solute free movement in select membranes such as in the renal collecting duct. AQPs can be inserted and withdrawn to regulate fluid homeostasis. Signal transduction Calcium ion Selective calcium ion entry into the cell is an important mechanism for initiating intracellular signal cascade. In the diagram, name the type of channel used in mechanism and name the substance calcium binds to in cell in this path. The type of channel used in this uh, mechanism is ligand gated calcium ion channel. Upon entering the cell, calcium binds with calmodulin activating specific kinase. This pathway can initiate smooth muscle contraction, neurotransmitter release and hormone secretion. G protein coupled receptor. Two main G protein coupled transduction system are il uh, illustrated. Name the element of transduction system labeled 1 and 2. What protein kinase are labeled in 3 and 4? So number 1 and 2 is number 1 is adenyl cyclase. Number 2 is phospholipase C. Protein kinase level 3 and 4. Uh, number 3 is protein kinase A and uh, number 4 is protein kinase C. Most uh, membrane receptors act through G protein. Many of their effects are rapid because they do not involve stimulation of transcription factor and protein synthesis. Receptor tyrosine kinase pathway. In the receptor tyrosine kinase pathway, name the element label 1 to 4. Is this sim uh, system simple or complex? Number 1 represents adapter protein. Number 2 uh, represents monomeric G protein. Number 3 represents mitogen activated protein kinase. And number 4 represents Nuclear transcription factor activated by MAP, mitogen activated protein kinase. This is an example of a complex pathway. Nuclear protein receptor. Name the seven major ligand that bind to nuclear protein receptor to produce their action. Seven ligands are aldosterone, cortisol, calcitriol, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and thyroid hormone. In the diagram, these ligand passively diffuse into the cell, binds to a nuclear receptor and initiate transcription and ultimately protein synthesis. Other than the thyroid hormone, all factors that use nuclear receptor are steroid hormone. An easy mnemonic to remember is except T. This brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe for more.